Ashley Anderson here. Listen, fair warning, my chair squeaks, but it's super comfy, so I don't want to change chairs. I love this chair, but it likes to make noises and tell me how much weight I've gained throughout nursing school. But that's not what this video is about. I'm gonna show you how to study for the NCLEX, whether it's your first time taking it, whether you've felt it before. And honestly, this is a great way to study while in nursing school. Actually, I wish I would have known about this while in nursing school because I most definitely 1000% would have studied this way while in nursing school. I think it would have made life so much easier. So I recently took the NCLEX for the third time, which means that I felt it twice, yes, twice. And when I took it the third time, I passed it in 75 questions and I can tell you without a doubt in my mind, I think the only reason why I passed it the third time was because I completely changed the way that I was studying for the NCLEX. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna show you the how, so stick with me. I gotta explain some things first and then I will actually show you how to implement these things. I know that I've watched a lot of videos where people just walk you through it, but I, I am a person, a visual learner. I need to see like what's going on. So I will show you the how, we will get to that. But first I wanna explain a, a couple of different concepts to you. What I'm gonna show you is called active recall and space repetition. And I'm also gonna talk about like UWorld. I have another app called Notion that I'm gonna show you. So we've got a couple of different things going on here and I will walk you through all of it. But I wanna tell you quickly that there is science on active recall and space repetition. I'm not getting into the science of this video. If you wanna watch it, if you wanna learn about it, I will have some resources and videos linked down below in the description box for you because I know that um, like completely changing the way that you've been studying is a little, no, oh, a little, little scary, right? Because it's like, wait a minute, what I've been doing has been working. Why do I want to change everything? So I totally understand. I know for me though, after I had felt the NCLEX twice, whenever I was going to take it the third time and I changed the way that I studied, I had nothing to lose. And I'm so glad that I actually changed everything because I seriously, I think that's the only reason why I passed is because I implemented these study methods um, into how I was studying for the NCLEX. But okay, enough blabbering, let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing that we are gonna talk about is space repetition. Now I do have some notes over here because I don't wanna mess this up, so if you guys see me looking down, that is why. Space repetition just means that you are gonna learn more effectively when you space out what you are learning over time. Now when it comes to time, to me in my head, there's two types. The first type of time is when you're studying for like a month or whatever for your NCLEX. The second type of time would be studying for a couple of chunks of time each day. Now the best part is depending on what you're studying for, you can use either one of those two types of time or you can use both. For example, if you're studying for NCLEX, you can study for a month, but if you're studying for a nursing exam, well, we know we don't have a month to study for those, right? Um, it's usually just like a week or even less time than that. So with that, if you're studying for a nursing exam, you'll need to study for a couple of chunks of time each day. I actually used both whenever I studied for the NCLEX. I, um, I only studied for a couple of hours each day and I did that for, I don't know, it was about a month, a little over a month or whatever. So I wasn't cramming, I wasn't sitting down for hours because that's actually what I did when I studied for the second time. So when I went in to take my NCLEX the second time, y'all, I'm not even kidding, I spent all day. The only times I wasn't studying was using the restroom, if I was eating, if I had to take a shower, and my son was also doing virtual learning at the time, so anytime he was working on his homework um, is when I wasn't studying. The rest of the day, I was literally setting up my computer either at my desk or at my kitchen table all day long, studying, 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 and I promise you that does not work because your brain becomes like a bowl of soup <laughs> and you stop retaining information. It just, it gets to a point where you just hit like this brick wall and nothing is staying inside of your mind anymore. You guys, I left out a very important part about space repetition and I cannot believe it. I was sitting here editing and I'm like, did I not film it? Did I not record it? Like what happened? Apparently I am losing my mind, which that's nothing new. Okay, so anyways, oh my UPS guy is here. I'm so excited. I ordered a steam mop adulting, right? And um, it's here and I'm gonna start mopping stuff as soon as I finish editing this video. Okay, back to what we were talking about, space repetition. Space repetition is not only the time, it's also spacing out what you are studying. So let's use medications, for example. Let's say today you review psych medications, tomorrow you review cardio medications, the next day you review maternity medications along with reviewing your psych medications again. The next day you review cardio medications along with maternity. If you see how you're like spacing out what you are learning and you're not reviewing the same stuff every single day, and then that way you can um, 
you're, you're getting more time in at learning these things. Does that make sense? I hope that that makes sense. Again, I have other videos linked down below in the description box. Probably people that explain this way better than I do, but you guys can check those out. The space repetition is the time and it's also spacing out what you were studying and when you were studying and reviewing those things constantly. He's knocked on the door. Okay, I think that explains that. I gotta get my steam mop. So that's what space repetition is. I can't show you the how of that. That's something that you will have to work out. Um, you know, pick out your chunks of time. There's studies that show that you shouldn't study for more than 50 minutes at a time. Some say 30, some say two hours. It, that's entirely up to you. How long can you sit down and actually focus and retain information when you are studying? If I exceed two hours, at that point, I'm not learning anything. I'm just sitting there wasting my time. Um, and there were times closer towards my NCLEX where um, I had been studying, it felt like a lot, but it really wasn't a couple of hours each day that I would just study for 30 to 45 minutes and I would take a break for a few hours and then I would come back, study for 30 to 45 minutes, take a break. You see what I mean? That's what space repetition is. So I beg you, please do not sit down for hours and hours and hours trying to study. It doesn't work for most of us. Um, I have watched some videos on YouTube of people that it does work for, but it did not work for me. It didn't work for me in nursing school either. Actually, let me give you an example of when it didn't work. Going into my fifth semester, our very first exam was over cardiology. And I love cardiology. I think it's very interesting to me. And so I was so excited and I studied my butt off for that exam and I bombed it. Absolutely bombed it. It was terrible. It was ridiculous. And I kept thinking, why and what in the world happened? And now that I look back, I realized I studied too much for that exam. So much that I wasn't actually retaining the information. So that's the first thing. That's spaced repetition. Next up is active recall. And this one is very important. Listen, stick with me here. I know I've been face to camera and I haven't showed you the how yet. I promise it is coming. I have to explain it first and then we will take a look at my computer. And I'm going to show you how to actually implement all of these things together. Do you know how your instructors are always saying, like, do practice questions? Practice questions, practice questions, practice. I mean, it's like engraved into your brain. It's kind of that same concept of if you didn't document it, it didn't happen. Like, you just, you just know. And they're constantly telling you to do practice questions. Practice questions are great because they make you actively think about the information. You have to pull it from your brain and actually think about it to answer the question, right? But the problem with practice questions is that when you do them, and you answer the question, whether you got it right or wrong, doesn't matter. Once you move on from that question, it's gone. Now, some of you guys are like me and you've taken notes, right? We have handwritten notes and I actually have some, I pulled this binder out. This one was from fifth semester. And you guys know how it is. We have a ton of different notes in here. Let me open this up and I'll show you. I mean, y'all know, look, you have all these notes, right? And let's say you're answering practice questions, you get something wrong, you're looking at the rationale, you're writing down, that information. Well, then you come back to review your notes. You're not actually having to actively recall anything because it's right here in front of you. If I was to sit down and study these notes, uh, this is talking about disorders of the anterior pituitary gland. And I'm going to start reading all this. Primary pituitary dysfunction is a problem in the pituitary. Secondary pituitary dysfunction is a problem in the hypothalamus. I'm not actually having to think about anything. All the information is there. And that's the problem with just taking notes and reviewing your notes. It's not making you recall that information. Now, I'm not just going to sit here and tell you to do practice questions. Do practice questions. Do practice questions. Yes, I want you to do practice questions, whether it's for NCLEX or it's for your nursing, um, nursing exams. It doesn't matter. Yes, do practice questions. But there's a big but. Don't just answer the questions and don't just write notes down. All right, because you're not having to actively recall that information. And here's where I'm going to show you how. So we're going to jump over into my computer and I'm going to show you Notion, which is an app that I use. It's a note taking app. We're also going to show you UWorld. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend UWorld for the NCLEX. I didn't have it the first two times. I got it going into the third time taking the NCLEX and it helped me tremendously. There was a lot of light bulb moments. The rationales are incredible. I will show them to you. I'm going to show you a few questions on there. Um, but I really do recommend UWorld. Now, if uh, you're in nursing school and you're not ready to, to get UWorld yet to start studying for the NCLEX or whatever, um, I think we had Evolve is what it was called. And I used to do practice questions on there. There's, um, there's a tons of different resources that you can do practice questions. I do recommend practice questions 100%, but we're going to do them a little bit differently. So let's dive into my computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are inside of Notion. And inside of Notion... I have a page titled NCLEX Study. And within this page, I have all of these other pages here. 
And for example, if we click on maternity, in this page I have even more pages. So if we click on newborn labor and delivery, this is where I have all of my questions. This is where that active recall comes into play. Now I'm going to pull up UWorld really quickly and let's just create, um, oh gosh, let's just create a random test here just to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So let's just do like five questions. We'll generate the test inside of UWorld. And so here's our question. And what I would do whenever I was doing this is I would actually pull up Notion and I do a split window. So we'll split the screens here. And so I have Notion over here. I'm going to actually go back and we're going to go to random notes from practice questions. And so here's, here's a list of a ton of different questions that I've done inside of Notion. These are questions that I created myself. So for example, let's say over here in UWorld, the nurse provides teaching for a client newly prescribed disulfiram for alcohol abstinence. What information or which information is the priority for the nurse to include? Um, disulfiram is not a cure for alcoholism. Importance of continuing to see a therapist. List of everyday items containing hidden alcohol. Yes, um, medical alert bracelet should identify, di no. So we're gonna hit submit. So we got that one correct. But the cool thing is in um, UWorld, regardless of whether you got the answer right or wrong, the rationales are amazing. I love them. And you can actually, even if I got the question right, I could still learn information from here. So let's just say, for example, I got this one wrong. Well, disulfiram. So I would go over here and maybe I didn't know what it was, right? So we're going to go over here and we're going to say, um, what is disulfiram? D-I, whoops. D-I-S-U-L-F-I-R-A-M. Well, we're going to click this little toggle menu right here. And to actually make a toggle, this is why right here that I love Notion is because you can have these little toggle screens. So to make one, you just hit this little add button. You scroll down to toggle. And there you have it. So we can actually put the question here. We're going to drop the toggle down. We can put the answer. So um, it is is given for well I can't spell okay it's given for alcoholism and it is a version it's for aversion therapy All right so say we just want to put that there so let's say that I am reviewing my questions and I get to this what is disulfiram um, normally if I'm reviewing the questions I wouldn't have you world pulled up but let's say I get to here and I'm like what is disulfiram and I, I'm thinking in my head without looking at the answer, this is that active recall. This is me actually having to think, okay, what is disulfiram? What are we giving it for? Like what's going on? And so then I can answer it and I can drop the toggle down and see if I am right or wrong. And so like, here's another question. What do you need to teach when giving disulfiram? Well, right here. Teaching includes, we need to avoid the hidden alcohol and liquid and cold cough med liquid, cold and cough medications, aftershaves, lotions, colognes, mouthwashes, foods such as sauces, vinegars, and flavor extracts so like vanilla. Um, we also need to teach that they need to abstain from alcohol for two weeks after the last dose um, because that disulfiram reaction can occur. Wear, bla wear a bracelet alerting others of being on disulfiram therapy. So that option was there, but um, that's the most important thing is, is making sure that they know what has alcohol in it in their everyday items. So do you see how I'm pulling those two together? Now, if you'll notice over here on Notion, I have things color coded. I think the last two times I went through these notes, I didn't change the colors. I just left them the same, but green means I got everything correct. Yellow means I got most of the information correct or some of it, and then red means I got it wrong. If I was to get a question that says, what is the Romberg test? Do you know what that is? Most of you watching this are saying, no, I have no idea what the Romberg test is, right? And that's okay. Again, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to make you feel bad. Like I didn't know what it was either. And if I just would have learned what the Romberg test was once and not had to review that multiple times and actually actively think about it, I wouldn't have remembered that and it wouldn't have stuck in my brain. So right here, the Romberg test. It's used to assess the patient's perception of their head in space and their body in space. And so it's used to determine the reason for loss of coordination. I didn't know that, and that's totally okay, but 
the problem was is I would do these practice questions, I would read over the rationales, and then I would make notes. But when, like I said, when I was reading the notes, I wasn't actively thinking about that information because it was all written right there in front of me. With Notion and with the toggle menu and having the practice questions and making my own questions from those, having that toggle menu makes the biggest difference because I am reviewing notes that I've made. I'm reviewing questions, but I can't see the answer yet. And so I actually have to think about that. And that my friends is active recall. And I'm telling you, it is incredibly helpful whenever it comes to studying for stuff because it's going to help you retain that information. And like I said, I have everything color coded as you can see here. And so um, the day before my exam, I actually did a practice exam on UWorld and I got into the 69th percentile of passing, which is really good. And then I also um, reviewed the red that's on Notion. So like the things that I had on here that were red, I went back through and I reviewed those before the exam. The green, I didn't stress about those too much because I, I was continuously getting those right. The yellow, I looked over the yellow, but I made sure I was reviewing the red because those are the ones I was getting wrong. And the cool thing is, is as you do this, even if you're studying for NCLEX or for your nursing exam, it doesn't matter you can see, actually see where you're struggling at. So if you have, um, let's say you're doing like, I don't know, let's go back to farm. I don't think I have very many on here. I think I started putting all of my questions into that like random, random one. This is taking forever to load. Okay, that's not loading. Um, let's go to meds. Okay, so as you can see here, I have um, a list of different medications. The only ones I didn't actually make questions for was for TB, trauma, and the fluids. But um, if we go to cardio, and we look here at the different cardiac medications, um, we have beta blockers, and so I would categorize these. So we have beta blockers, remember what they end in, to name some of them, what do they do, who cannot have them, what do they mask the signs and symptoms of, and I can see here, if I was to review this information for the exam, I can see, okay, beta blockers, I'm pretty good on those. Yes, I have a few yellow. Calcium channel blockers, all right, we've got some red. I need to review that. ACE inhibitors, um, the ones that are black, I just they're supposed to be green. I just didn't go back in and change them. Um, but I can see that, okay, I've got a few yellow, some red here. Your ARBs, mostly green, so I don't need to stress about those. Digoxin. What do you need to monitor for? Do you guys remember digoxin? The one thing that the one thing that is like beaten into your head about digoxin is do not give it if the heart rate is less than 60, but there's more to it than that. And um, I didn't realize all that because that was the one thing that was like beaten to our head in nursing school. Uh, what do you need to monitor? Kidney function, bun, and creatinine. I'm talking about toxicity. What are the signs and symptoms of toxicity? And so I can see whenever I'm going through here, okay, vasodilators, we have some red. The joxin, we have some red. Um, calcium channel blockers, we have some red. So then that helps me decide what I really need to focus on. So you can see all the different medications that I have on there. If we go back, like I said, I have maternity. You can pull this up. We can see um, I have a lot of red in here, a lot of red. I did struggle with maternity. Um, but I knew what to study and I could see where I was struggling at, which is really why I love this study method, um, is that it's been really beneficial for me to see what's going on and what, what areas I'm not so hot in and what areas, you know, I'm doing okay in and I don't need to stress too much about, or just do a light review over them and then really go into a good study with, um, these. And this is, this is exactly what I did, you guys, to pass the NCLEX the third time in 75 questions after failing it twice, after both times before using my same study methods, um, that I had used throughout nursing school. And then I changed everything to studying using active recall, space repetition, UWorld, and Notion. And it was a game changer, obviously, because I passed, which, yeah, thank God. And listen, I just want to say, like, I didn't make a video about my story or anything, but if you're watching this and you failed the NCLEX, I am with you. I feel you. I know those feelings. It sucks, but I promise you're not a dummy. Um, there's nothing wrong with you. Yes, you are meant to be a nurse, and yes, you will be a nurse. So I just want you to know that I'm here with you. I feel you. I understand how what you're going through and how it feels, but you will get through this. I want you to implement this this way of studying if you've not done it before. Really dive into it. Do the space repetition along with the active recall. Make your own questions. Get on Notion. Use UWorld. And as always, if you ever need help, seriously, please reach out to me. I, I hope I did 
okay in this video and explaining everything, but if you have more questions, please let me know. Like I said, I will have some other resources linked down below, and I have some videos linked to of people who explain this way better than I did, so you guys can go watch those if you need some more information about it. But seriously, please, 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 please try this. Um, implement this and see if it's something that'll work for you, especially if you're like me and you failed the NCLEX a couple of times. My question to myself was, what do I have to lose? You know, because I know that changing changing your study habits, the way that you study and stuff is a little stressful, especially whenever it comes to NCLEX, but I want to encourage you to give this a go and you will actually see, you will start to see that you go from a lot of red to a lot of green and you will start to see those colors changes and then that's how you're going to know, okay, wait a minute, this is working. I am understanding this stuff a lot more and you will be learning new things. You will be understanding things. You will have more light bulb moments. It's incredibly helpful because um, look, nursing school, it's like you, you just fly through nursing school. You get through one exam, you're on to the next thing. And how many of us go back in nursing school and review past information? Mm -mm, right? The only time you're reviewing past information is literally from that semester and you're reviewing it for your final. So we're not going back in our fifth semester reviewing stuff from first semester. Um, you don't start reviewing all those things until you're studying for your NCLEX. And this is the way to do it. And I, I literally, you guys, I'm telling you, I had to make this video because I was so excited um, to share this information with all my fellow nursing students because I actually learned this from somebody who was studying in medical school. And I have that linked, um, that video linked down below. And I thought, hey, if this is working for them in medical school, it can definitely work for us in nursing school. And I need to share this information with my fellow nursing students because I feel y'all. And um, I know the stress and the struggles of nursing school. And I know the um, ridiculous amount of stress that the NCLEX brings on all of us. And I know that whole stigma around passing it your first time with 75 questions and it's all built up throughout nursing school. And that's the goal, right? And then whenever it doesn't happen, you feel like crap. Um, so I feel you on that. I've been there. I know how it feels. But anyways, I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit babbling. Um, go implement this right now. And like I said, if you have questions, seriously, reach out to me. My Instagram is linked down below. You can DM me. You can always comment on this video. Have an incredible day, my friend, and I will see you in the next one.